Do you think your curls might be suffering from hygro fatigue? Well, in this video, I'm going to be breaking down what hygro fatigue is, how to fix it, and how to prevent it from happening again. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina, and here we talk all things naturally curly hair. I love simplifying things, doing step-by-step -step tutorials, and talking about the science of hair. I also wanted to thank Curlsmith for partnering with me for this video. I'm teaming up with them for Hot Curl Summer again to share with you some ways that you can prevent high girl fatigue in the summertime. High girl fatigue is much more likely to occur in the summertime because we're in water a lot more and washing our hair a lot more. So let's go ahead and dive in. So you can find the timestamps down below, but let's first start off with what is high girl fatigue. High girl fatigue is damage that occurs to the hair from repeated swelling and drying of the hair. It's first helpful to understand the structure of hair and how it actually swells. So there are three layers to our hair. The first one being the cuticle layer, which is the outermost layer. Think of this kind of like shingles on a roof or scales on a fish. This is the outermost layer that protects the inside of the hair. And because of that, it faces the most damage. Then you have the cortex, which is the inner layer of the hair. This is responsible for the hair structure, its strength, its color, and its texture. There's also a medulla layer, which is the very innermost layer of the hair. Not all hair types have this, but it's more commonly found in coarse textured hair. So when our hair gets wet, it actually swells kind of like a sponge. This swelling then pushes the cuticle in a more raised position. So the cuticle kind of opens because it's being swelled or pushed open from the inside of the hair as it absorbs water. So because the cuticle gets pushed outwards, this is why our hair is most fragile when it is wet. The cuticle layer can become damaged and chip away and this results in protein loss or weakened hair and it also results in moisture loss, which causes dry hair. Our hair also has bonds in it, one of them being hydrogen bonds. When our hair gets wet, those hydrogen bonds temporarily break. This is why our hair looks more stretched out and limp when it's wet, and then when it dries, it kind of bounces back up to its shape. This is also why humidity causes the hair to swell and also become more limp. You might notice that in very humid environments, your curls fall a lot easier or they become more frizzy. And this is because our hair is absorbing the water from the air and it's breaking those hydrogen bonds. So now let's talk about some of the signs of hygro fatigue and how to tell if you have it. The first one is a very limp appearance to your curls or curls that are just not springing back up. If you just notice that your hair all of a sudden looked a lot looser than it normally is, then that could be a sign of over moisturized hair or high girl fatigue. The next is the way that it feels and it could feel like a very mushy, gummy texture. That's a sign of moisture overload and also a sign of high girl fatigue is just the feeling of it. It doesn't feel great and can also even look dull and appear frizzy. Also having too much elasticity, you can actually do a strand test to test your hair's elasticity, which is a great way to tell if it's protein and moisture balance, but you can also tell if you have high growth fatigue. So you just wanna take a clean strand of hair, like no product on it or anything, and then gently stretch it, just like a normal amount of stretching, not like yanking on it. And if it just stretches and stretches forever and then finally breaks, then that's a sign of high growth fatigue or even over moisturized hair. If it just snaps immediately, then that's a sign of not enough moisture in your hair or maybe even protein overload. And if it just has a normal amount of stretch and then breaks, you know, as you're applying tension, then that's normal for your hair to break. It's gonna break if you apply enough tension, but you just wanna look for that over stretchiness or just snapping immediately. You might also be experiencing more breakage and also more tangles. If you have that gummy, mushy feeling in your hair, then it's probably tangling up a lot more. And with that excess elasticity, you could be experiencing excess breakage. So when you're detangling your hair with conditioner, it might just be snapping off or you're finding lots of little short hairs like all over your shower or all over your sink. That could be a sign of high growth fatigue as well. So now let's talk about some of the common causes of high growth fatigue and how you can prevent it. So the first most common cause of high girl fatigue is washing your hair every day without protecting it with an oil or just washing it too frequently. We know that oil and water don't mix and our scalp naturally produces oils which protect the hair from becoming damaged. So if you're washing your hair every single day, you could be stripping out those natural oils, leaving your hair dry and prone to high girl fatigue. Using an oil before you shampoo your hair is one of the best ways to prevent your hair from swelling too much, causing high girl fatigue. One of my favorite oils to use before I shampoo is from Curlsmith. This is their fragrance free shine oil. Ever since I tried this oil when it came out recently, I've been using it every single time before I shampoo to pre-poo with. 
This is a multi-purpose oil, so you can definitely use this at the end of your routine. It's definitely great for lots of different things. It's very lightweight. But the reason I love this one so much as a pre-shampoo oil is it soaks into the hair very quickly and very easily. Because I don't like to wait around to then go wash my hair because you want to make sure that you let the oil soak in before you start to shampoo your hair or it might be harder to shampoo. And even better, you can apply an oil the night before you wash your hair. That oil is gonna lubricate the hair. You can even use it to dry detangle if you want to, but you don't have to dry detangle. You can just use an oil as a pre-poo treatment to help protect your hair. This can also fill in the gaps in your hair's cuticle, which prevents excessive moisture and protein loss. So this can actually help protect your hair from further damage, especially if it's very damaged or if you have high porosity hair. It's kind of like just adding this protective layer on your hair. That way when you go in and shampoo, your hair is not getting completely stripped out and it's not swelling too much. So another common cause of high growth fatigue, like I mentioned, is washing your hair every single day or using a stripping shampoo, like a very strong shampoo that has strong surfactants in it like sulfates. I recommend using a more mild shampoo, like a sulfate-free shampoo. It can still be a lathering shampoo, but I wouldn't use something that's super clarifying every single time you wash your hair. I like to alternate. This is a more gentle shampoo from Curl Smith. This is the Fragrance Free Shine Shampoo. This is a gentle, light foaming shampoo, so it gives you a nice foam, but it's not too stripping on the hair. So you won't be stripping out those natural oils that can help protect your hair. So another big cause of high growth fatigue, especially in the summer, is wetting your hair multiple times a day, like letting it get wet and then letting it dry and then wetting it again in the same day. You just wanna make sure you're not doing this stuff repeatedly. Every once in a while is totally fine. Still enjoy your summer and have fun. But if you do plan on getting your hair soaking wet, like in the pool, I recommend either first applying a pre-poo oil, just like you would before you shampoo to help protect it, or you could even wet your hair down with clean water and then apply a leave-in conditioner or maybe even a deep conditioner. That way your hair absorbs that conditioner so it won't absorb as much of the chlorine water. This is a really great trick. It can also prevent your hair from getting dried out and very tangled in chlorine water or even salt ocean water. And then you definitely wanna make sure that you shampoo out that chlorine or that salt water as soon as you can because you don't wanna leave that in your hair. It could cause damage to your hair. Curly hair loves moisture, but there can be too much of a good thing. And if you're using products that are very heavy, like contain very heavy oils and butters in them, and you're applying them to soaking wet hair, your hair can definitely become over moisturized, especially if you're styling very often. Sometimes these very heavy products can cause the hair to hold on to too much moisture to where it doesn't even fully evaporate when your hair dries. We do wanna keep some moisture in our hair, but we do want it to actually dry out. If your hair is still damp even after it's dried or if it's stayed damp all day long and even into the next day, it still feels kind of damp and mushy, it's definitely over moisturized. So instead of using products that are very rich and overly moisturizing, opt for more lightweight styling products. Here are some examples from Curl Smith of two of their collections that are more lightweight in my opinion. We first have the scalp recipe. These products provide a lot of moisture without weighing the hair down. They're still very light. I have the weightless air dry cream in the hydro style flexi jelly this is like a medium hold gel it's very liquidy so it has really great slip to it and it's very lightweight this is not going to cause your hair to feel like greasy or weighed down and then there's the shape up aqua gel and the bouncy strength volume foam this is from the strength recipe i do find the strength recipe products to be a little bit lighter they're kind of more like a medium weight compared to like the moisture recipe, which is very moisturizing and more ideal for very dry hair or even coarse hair textures. Most all Curl Smith products are going to be great for all hair types, but if you are struggling with over moisturized hair, I would go with the scalp recipe or the strength recipe if you were looking for more lightweight products. The next big cause of high growth fatigue is leaving your hair wet for long periods of time. This is similar to like what I mentioned before about just letting your hair air dry for too long or using too heavy products, but but if you leave your hair wet for too long, it can actually cause those hydrogen bonds to break down too much and it can weaken your cell membrane complex, which is within the cortex layer of the hair. It's kind of like the glue that holds the cortex layer together, but basically that can become weakened if your hair stays wet for too long. I actually read a study that said that our hair becomes fully swelled, like swelled to the maximum after two minutes of being saturated with water. So maybe you want to reduce the time that your hair is wet in the shower. You could even 
wash your hair towards the end of your shower. Just try and reduce the time that your hair is wet overall. So you want to avoid leaving your deep conditioner in for too long. I always recommend reading the label on the back of your deep conditioner and see how long it says to leave it in. This is very important. If it says to only leave it on for 10 minutes, I wouldn't go more than 10 minutes, 20 minutes max. It might even say you could leave on for 20 to 30 minutes, but I haven't really seen deep conditioners say more than that because we don't want to leave our hair wet for too long and we definitely don't want to leave a deep conditioner in too long. I highly recommend not sleeping in your deep conditioner. This is not helping your hair. It might feel extra soft, but that's because it's over moisturized. It's not going to just work better because you left it on longer. As long as it absorbs into your hair and you let it sit for the time that it says on the bottle, your hair is getting moisturized. So it's not really doing any benefit to leave it on any longer. Just rinse it out and let your hair air dry if you need to go to bed. Also avoid sleeping with wet hair every time you wash your hair and definitely do not sleep with your hair up in a plop or wet in a bonnet pressed against your scalp all night. We don't want to suffocate our scalp. It's really bad for our scalp. It can lead to scalp conditions, overgrowth of fungus on our scalp, and even things like dandruff. It's not good at all to leave your scalp suffocated. It needs air. It needs to breathe. So if you absolutely need to go to sleep with wet hair, just lay your hair out over your silk or your satin pillowcase. Don't put it up or anything because we don't want to tie our hair up tight when it's wet. That can also lead to damage and breakage because like I said, our hair is weakest when it's wet. So I would just lay it out over a silk pillowcase. That way the air can get to your scalp and it can dry overnight, maybe even turn on a fan. But I highly recommend diffusing if you need to go to bed, even if you're not going to be styling your hair, at least diffuse your hair on like cold or warm air, just kind of hover diffuse just to get it mostly dry. That way you're not going to bed with soaking wet hair. It's a really bad habit and you don't wanna be doing that every single time you wash your hair, especially if you wash your hair very often. Now, every once in a while is not gonna hurt anything. I know people have slept with their hair in a plop, once in a while is not going to hurt anything, but just keep that in mind if you're doing that repeatedly, you're more likely to get high growth fatigue or over moisturized hair. So one of the best ways to prevent your hair from staying wet too long, especially if you plan to air dry, is to scrunch out the excess water after you finish styling. So you pretty much will see me do this in every styling routine. After I get done applying my styling products, I will use my hair towel to scrunch out the excess water. This is a t-shirt towel. You could totally just use an old t-shirt if you have one or a microfiber towel, but I like these flat weave cotton towels. I can link it for you down below, but they're really absorbent and they help to absorb that excess water. The more that we can help our hair evaporate the water out, so you squeeze the water out, the quicker it's going to dry. And this is also going to cut down on your diffusing time, which saves a lot of time. You basically don't wanna leave your hair waterlogged, especially if you're someone that likes to style with your hair soaking wet. So if you apply your stylers to your hair dripping soaking wet, then it's gonna take forever for your hair to dry if you don't scrunch that out before you diffuse or before you air dry. I highly recommend diffusing if you are not already, especially if you just hover diffuse, it's not gonna cause frizz or damage. You just have to diffuse in the right way. I've done videos in the past about how to diffuse properly without causing frizz, but diffusing helps evaporate the water out of your hair so it dries quicker and it sets the gel cast right away so you get less frizz, especially if you're using a gel that does provide a cast, you're gonna get more of a cast if you diffuse compared to air drying where your hair just is more susceptible to frizzing up in the humidity and the air as you're walking around and there's more movement. It's just a lot better to diffuse if you can. If you do have to air dry, I recommend kind of flipping your hair from side to side to make sure that your scalp is getting air to it and even sit under a fan if possible. You want to get your hair dry as soon as possible and not walk around with it wet all day for hours on end. Another common cause of high growth fatigue is soaking your hair every time that you refresh. Now I know when we refresh, we have to wet our hair down every once in a while, but if you have to soak your hair every time you refresh, or if you get in the shower and wet your hair down and then refresh, like without shampooing, that can definitely cause high growth fatigue because you're saturating your hair with water. So those hydrogen bonds are fully breaking and you're resetting your hair. I've done lots of videos on refreshing. I know refreshing is really tricky and it does take a lot of practice. And as your hair gets healthier, it will be a lot easier to refresh. When my hair was damaged, I hated refreshing. It never turned out right and it was just so difficult. And it's been a lot easier now that my hair is healthy and I got my damaged highlights finally completely cut off. It's so much easier. 
And so I don't always have to do a full refresh. I try and add as little water as possible. So usually on day two, I will either skip refreshing or I will try and do like a dry refresh because a lot of our products have water in it. I definitely recommend using gels that are very liquidy that contain water like these Curlsmith gels because these are gonna help you refresh without having to add too much water. Usually if you look at the ingredients, like the first or second ingredient is water, which is what you want. Both of these have water as the first ingredient. So as I mentioned, you wanna use as little water as possible when you're refreshing. So I highly recommend a spray bottle like this one. These are called a Flarisol spray bottle. So it's sort of just like mist your hair. So when you spray it, it just makes this very fine mist instead of saturating your hair. Cause like I mentioned before, it takes your hair two minutes to become fully swelled if you saturate it with water. But if you're refreshing very quickly and you're just kind of spritzing water and you're just kind of smoothing water on the surface, you're not saturating your hair. So it's not going to be as damaging to refresh. So avoid completely saturating your hair. I don't recommend getting in the shower and completely wetting it. You're just rinsing out all your products and you're gonna have to add more, which can just be wasteful. If you do have to do a full refresh, I recommend sectioning your hair and maybe just wetting your hands and smoothing some of that water over your hair. I've done that before and I've showed sort of like a full refresh. It looks like my hair is very wet, but it's actually just damp. Like my hair still feels dry down at the scalp. I didn't completely saturate my hair from root to tip. The roots of my hair are pretty much dry and then the rest is just damp, even though it does look soaking wet. Another thing that you can do is take your hair towel and scrunch out the excess water before you diffuse on a refresh. I do that a lot of times if I feel like I might've added too much product because that can absorb some product and just to cut down on the dry time when I'm refreshing. So another cause of hygro fatigue is just having damaged hair already. As I mentioned, it's a lot harder to manage your hair when it is damaged, or if you have high porosity hair, your cuticle layer is already compromised. It might have cracks in the cuticle. It could have open holes in the cuticle which is letting protein out and also moisture out and it's also absorbing water a lot quicker so if your hair is high porosity or damaged it's more likely to get high growth fatigue so that's why a pre poo oil is so helpful at just filling those in and preventing your hair from swelling too much when it gets wet so now let's dive into how to fix high growth fatigue so if you know that your hair is currently in high growth fatigue or it's over moisturized and you want to fix it I'm going to show you step by step how you can do that with two separate routines. The first way to fix it is to use a bond repair treatment like Curl Smith's Bond Curl. This is a bond repair treatment, so it's going to repair those broken bonds in your hair. There's three types of bonds in the hair, one of them being hydrogen bonds, like we mentioned, that is damaged from hygro fatigue or that overswelling of the hair and drying of the hair. So this can help with that. This is one of the few bonding treatments that I've tried that actually repairs all three types of broken bonds that are caused by different factors everything from highlights to sun damage to a sudden change in pH to high growth fatigue. So this is definitely a good one to try. So this is meant to be used before you shampoo your hair. So I first recommend applying this to damp hair. Your hair can be dirty, it can have stylers in it. Unless if you had a lot of styling products or a lot of buildup or a lot of oil in your hair, you might wanna clarify first, but I usually just apply this right on hair that is damp, but still has you know old product in it and stuff. You can apply it in sections that will help you more evenly distribute it. And it does have a lot of slip and it feels very conditioning, so it will help you to detangle before you shampoo, which is super helpful, especially if you're struggling with high growth fatigue. Then you wanna shampoo your hair, or you could use a clarifying shampoo if you do have a lot of buildup, or if your hair is super over moisturized, a clarifying shampoo might be a good way to just reset it and remove that buildup. But you can also use something like the Shine Shampoo. It's just a gentle shampoo, but you definitely want to make sure that you shampoo out that Bond Curl Rehab Salve. Also, do not leave the Bond Curl Rehab Salve on for too long. Read the directions. Depending on how damaged your hair is, it will advise you to leave it on for different amounts of time. I usually do about 10 minutes on my hair and that is plenty. Then you're gonna wanna deep condition because after you use a protein treatment like the Bond Curl Rehab Salve, your hair might feel a little bit like stiff or brittle from that protein. So definitely recommend deep conditioning. You can use something like the multitasking conditioner to deep condition or you can use something that is protein free if you just wanna make sure that your hair maintains that balance. You could go with a protein free deep conditioner. All the Curlsmith deep conditioners are amazing. I like the one from the scalp recipe a lot as well. After you rinse out your deep conditioner, you're going to want to style your hair using very lightweight products. As I mentioned, we don't need too much moisture in this routine. So I would go with something that's pretty lightweight like the weightless air dry cream 
and the Hydro Style Flexi Jelly. I usually do a cream and a gel or a leave-in conditioner and a gel. I really like gels because they just give your hair that hold and can even protect it from humidity. So alternatively, if you don't wanna use Bond Curl, I'm just gonna run you through the steps if you don't use Bond Curl to repair hydro fatigue. So you first wanna use a pre-poo oil like I mentioned. You'll definitely wanna incorporate this if you're not gonna use a pre-shampoo treatment like Bond Curl. I would definitely be using an oil every time you wash after having hydro fatigue just to prevent it. So apply some of this maybe the night before or even at least like 10 minutes or so before you go in and shampoo. Then use a regular shampoo or clarifying shampoo, maybe something like the Core Strength Shampoo, which is just a gentle shampoo if you don't need to clarify. Then use either a clarifying shampoo or just a regular shampoo. This is the Core Strength Shampoo, which is a good option because it has some protein and that's going to help strengthen the hair if it got damaged from hydro fatigue. This is a pretty mild shampoo too, so this is not like a clarifying shampoo. If you did need a clarifying shampoo, go with the Curlsmith Detox Kit. Then after you shampoo, you can either just condition with a lightweight conditioner or you could use a deep conditioner with some protein. Now the key is here to not over moisturize your hair because you're recovering from hydro fatigue. So don't leave your deep conditioner on too long or don't go with something that is too heavy. Something like the multitasking conditioner or the one from the scalp recipe is another good option if you want a deep condition but you don't want something that's too heavy. And maybe just do it for like five minutes to add that moisture back to your hair and then fully rinse it out. Then again, you're going to just style with some lightweight products that are not going to over moisturize your hair, but still style your hair and give it some definition and bounce. Then scrunch out the excess water and finish with diffusing your hair. Now over time, your hair should recover from this high roll fatigue. If you did any extreme damage to your hair, then that might take some more repairing with lots of bond treatments and even growing out the damage and getting trims. But I think you can recover from just over moisturization definitely with just doing these types of routines on a regular basis. So I typically use Bond Curl about once a month just for maintenance, but if you did have damaged hair, you could do it once a week or every other week. Just be careful with something like Bond Curl because like I mentioned, it does have strong proteins in it, so you don't wanna overdo it on that end of the spectrum either. So I know I mentioned lots of different Curlsmith products. I will link all of these down below, and if you're interested in getting any of them, you can save 10% off your first order with my code. I will have that here on the screen. It's just Gina Marie 10. So I also recommend watching the video that I did all about how to diffuse your curly hair three ways. If you want to start diffusing and you're not really sure where to start, and if you want to prevent that high roll fatigue, I definitely recommend checking out that video all about how to diffuse. I share some tips to prevent frizz and how to properly diffuse your hair so that way you get better results. So I'll have that video linked here on the screen and I will talk to you in my next one. Bye everyone.